Can we? No, no. Where are you going? Where? No. Ah, uh, oh, damn it. All right, we'll do the fish. Can we talk about this? Assassins in League of Legends are a bit of a touchy subject. And I don't mean that because they grab you inappropriately without consent. I mean it because they're always in a weird purgatory. Assassins are by far the hardest characters to balance because of how high risk and high reward they're supposed to be. If the risk is too low with the reward being too high, we end up with characters like LeBlanc, who dominate for a patch or two before being, uh, voluntarily removed from the current meta. If the risk is too high with the reward being too low, we end up with pre-lethality talent. AKA help me, I wish I could parkour away from myself. In short, assassins have a problem fitting into the meta, but they don't have a problem fitting in you. But reworks sometimes lead to mystery. Characters who teeter in the middle of, oh, I get it, and what the fuck is going on. And that being said, Fizz is good at everything. He is a great assassin, bruiser, tank, mage, stay-at-home dad DPS that isn't really confined to a class. Let me explain. Any given moment, Fizz can transform from a glass cannon burst mage to a tanky DPS monster with a quick switch of his build. And that doesn't make sense. I mean, look at him. That's not the face of a tank. That's the face of a serial murderer. If you were wondering about his species, I'd say he's an Albert Fish. Haha! <laughs> no, no, but that was, that, he's pretty bad. If you're comfortable in your abilities, start Dark Seal. If you're not, start crying. Because though Fizz is one of the most mobile champions in the game, one badly timed ability can make you into the freshest sashimi. And that's the only advice I have. You can open the shop with a blindfold and click on anything afterwards and it'll work. His E is possibly the best movement spell in history. I mean, Stalin Shunpo was pretty good, but it has nothing on this. Fizz hops on his trident for 0.75 seconds and becomes untargetable, meaning he could dodge every single ability in the game while repositioning himself. He's a burst champion with anti-burst, and if he just so happens to not like you that day, he'll just land on you and drop the bass. His Q is another dash attack, but this one procs on hit abilities. On Tank Fizz, it's not too painful, but it has its purpose, and I'll get to that. His ultimate is a slow as shit skill shot, seriously, I walk faster than this, that deals more damage and has a larger displacement based on the distance traveled. But honestly, if a Fizz can land a max distance ult on you, you probably deserve it. The AoE deals enough damage to put both the champion and the player in the hospital, so good luck! And since the damage and CC of this ability is AoE, it forces your team to leave you out to dry, lest they want to receive a shipment of these hands as well. His ult also procs the passive on his W, which is the most important skill in his kit. Passively, his W makes you bleed for the next 3 seconds. The active, however, is a much scarier story. He deals magic damage on his next auto attack, but if you've been bleeding for more than 2 seconds, the magic damage dealt on this ability is triple. Most of his chances to burst or trade rely mainly on his ability to land his W active after 2 seconds of proccing the passive. God, that was confusing. Most people think that Fizz's burst comes from the combination of his E and his ult, but in truth his mega auto is much scarier. Because the burst will either deal all of this damage as a mage, or all of this as a bruiser. Fizz is probably the only top laner in the current meta that can opt out of taking a mobility summoner spell and get ignite instead making his dueling potential that much scarier. His Q just acts as a nuke delivery service to proc all of his on hit abilities. In short, if you're good at Fizz, play him mid and you'll be able to carry the game. If you're bad at Fizz, play him top, and you'll be able to carry the game. Thank you for watching this week's episode of Can We Talk About This? If there's something else you want to talk about, leave it in the comment section below, and I'll be sure to get to it, because, because you, you trust me, right? I'm a very trustworthy person. I mean, I mean, kind of. I can't, uh, can't really remember of an instance in which I can prove that, but... I don't know, just take my word for it. Also, quick announcement. Next week's Can We Talk About This is going to be about something that isn't League of Legends. Don't worry, I'm still going to be doing League videos. There's just something else I want to talk about. Uh, and yeah, that's about it. Um, there's the announcement. Uh, the awkward outro, and now we just gotta kinda... Kinda twiddle our thumbs for a bit. Huh? What are you into?